Welcome back. So today we're going to be going over a premium buying guide for Enlisted. So let's dive straight into it. Right off the bat, if you are a player who wants to put money into this game and you don't want to put a ton in but you want to get the best bang for your buck, it's right here. It's your premium time. There is nothing more valuable than premium time. It goes on sale multiple times throughout the year. Usually around the anniversary, Christmas, and I think VE Day. Maybe also VJ Day. But usually around the big holidays, it goes on sale. And you can get it for like half off. You can get a year worth of it. It's not terribly expensive. But what you're getting is 100% XP. From what people tell me, silver is tied to XP, so it should also increase your silver gains. You're getting two more squads, which is huge. And then you get some other nice things like soldier reserve size, decals, preset slots. So that's your best bang for your buck. If I had to recommend only getting one thing for the game, it would be premium time. So with that, you get four squads normally. You're able to take six, so you can take a second vehicle. You can take another infantry squad. You can diversify your lineup. You research things faster. That's the best bang for your buck in the game. Now the second is the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass is going to get you a ton of rewards, whether they're the Gold Order Soldiers, Gold Order Weapons, Silver, Customization Tickets, Upgrade Tickets for your Vehicles, uh, Soldier Level Up Orders, basically the whole nine yards. But the big thing with the battle pass and why it is such good value why I would put it number two because number one is the premium time you just get more for it but number two is the battle pass and the reason for that is essentially as long as you're going to consistently play enlisted after you buy the first battle pass you can continue getting them effectively for free and the reason for that is it's like 900 gold to buy the battle pass but throughout the battle pass they give you gold back and so by the end of the battle pass, you will have accumulated enough gold to buy the next battle pass. And the thing is, with the battle pass, you get your daily tasks. If you complete, say, nine tasks, then you get three stars. Right? So you can go through and you can level it up pretty quickly by just doing all your daily tasks and doing your weekly tasks and whatnot. So realistically, you don't have to play for 90 days or however long the battle pass lasts. Realistically, you can get through it all in less than a month. Moving on from there, we start to get into the other more nuanced uses of gold. So, for example, there's an event running. If you missed out on days of the event, at the end you'll be able to throw gold at it. Now, for the amount of time that this event takes to do, I don't think it's worth the amount of gold that you're going to have to put into it. But, life happens. At the end of the day, if you really want something in an event, and it doesn't have to strictly speaking be this event, but any event, you can throw some gold at it. However, I would recommend just doing the 20,000 points. I don't think that one's particularly high value. Another one is silver. This is new with the merge. I don't think it's worth it. I think patience is a virtue, and grinding out more silver is definitely the way to go, and just picking and choosing what you actually buy. There's lots and lots of submachine guns here, but realistically, you only need to pick up a few of them. Like, realistically, you're probably fine using MP28s on your medic squad, and then waiting until you get MP38s, for example. Realistically, it's the same thing with bolt-action rifles. You're going to be pretty okay waiting to get, say, car 98s the standard ones, putting them on everybody, using them to research all of BR1, all of BR2, all of BR3, and then once you've researched everything and you've built up some silver and you're ready to go, then maybe you spend them on something up here. 
and you start moving into BR3 and 4. But I would absolutely not recommend spending gold on silver. You can spend gold in the Battle Pass shop. And this one's really up to you. They go on sale from time to time, and when they've been on sale before, I have spent gold in here picking up uh, various weapons. You don't get a ton of gold weapon orders, so if you want to outfit squads, like completely outfit them with some of these weapons, and, and bear in mind, there are limits on them, so... Where does it show? Yeah, so two of four. Since I have two of these, you can have a max of four of them. So you can't completely outfit a squad, but say you have a machine gun squad, you can get three of them, and you have enough for the whole machine gun squad. This is really just up to the beholder. If there's a weapon that you really like or you really want, like, for example, the T-20 for America is really good, it would definitely be worthwhile to pick up two more of these and have four of them. They're phenomenal weapons, but it's up to you. They're not going to be worth it for everybody. I would caution against getting lots of them because they don't add a ton to your army, other than just making things fun and interesting. But if they're on sale, I think they're a definite pickup. If there's something that you like in here and they go on sale, it's a great way to spend gold. That being said, when it comes to Battle Pass vehicles, I would not. While they are fully upgraded vehicles, I think a lot of the vehicle upgrades aren't really necessary to play a vehicle in this game, and you can pretty comfortably wait until you get a gold order either from the Battle Pass or from an event, and I just don't think, even when they're half off, I just don't think that they have that kind of value. If, if you could pick up one of these as a brand new player and use it at like, right off the bat, without grinding out the squad, maybe in that specific case, and then, in even in that case, only one of them, and then never again. But, that's not the way it works, so, I don't think it's worthwhile. Same with Battle Pass Soldiers. I don't think that Battle Pass Soldiers actually offer anything of value. Like, if they removed them from the game tomorrow, I wouldn't miss them. So I would never, ever spend gold on Battle Pass Soldiers. It's a terrible value. You should not do it. Moving on from there, we have additional squad slots. Now, you'll notice, for most of my factions, I have all of them. Now, I didn't get them all in a day. Well, technically I did because of the merge. But I got all these before the merge, playing the various campaigns and... Over time, I built them up. The thing with them... Japan will be an example of this, since I don't have them all. They get progressively more expensive, so getting all of them can be... a lot. I would recommend getting one or two. Beyond that, it's really just a quality of life thing. You're not really gaining anything substantial. Like, realistically, I don't need all of these squads. And there's a lot of repetition here, but I like bringing them. I like being able to pick and choose what I want at a given time. And these lineups that I have on here right now, they aren't the most exciting lineups in the world, but at times I'll cut down on some of the duplicates, and instead I'll have like three or four different specialist squads and just pull them out situationally to whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So... I think squad slots have value, but I think that they have a limited value. It's really just a quality of life thing, and if you're getting six slots by having premium time, and you need premium time in order to get the extra slots anyway, then I would be I, w I would say pick up one, maybe two more on top of that for like seven or eight slots, and at eight slots, realistically, that's that's enough slots. You don't really need more than that. Seven even. You probably have more than enough slots to make any lineup that you want. Just bear in mind that the slots are separate for each nation, so you have to do it for each nation. 
Moving on from there, we have everybody's favorite premium squads. So, we're going to get into individual types of premium squads. We're not going to get into specific premium squads, but generally speaking, as an overview, if premium squads are not on sale, they are not worth it. Unless you are really, really hyped for it, or you really want them for some reason. Now, maybe it's because you're playing Germany and you want paratroopers. And right now, the only way for a new player to get paratroopers is to go in here and to pick up a paratrooper squad. And they have them for Germany, America, uh, these guys, and for Russia. With these guys, I think. Yes, these guys. There's something that you can't get anywhere else, so maybe they're worth picking up at full price, but if you have patience and you don't mind waiting, I think that you get way more bang for your buck by waiting for one of the sales, and they have sales all the time. Like, we had one in November, we had one in December, we probably have one coming up in another month or two. They do them all the time. But hey, you know, if you've got disposable income and gaming's your hobby, you're not really losing out on picking up a premium squad. Just know that there are more valuable things that you can get, like premium time and the battle pass. Now, let's get into specifics when it comes to premium squads. Now, I think that there's a hierarchy to premium squad value. And basically, at the top of that chart, you're going to find tanks, you're going to find machine gun squads, and you're going to find paratroopers. And you're also going to find one other thing that's new, and that's APCs. Now, why is that? Well, simply put, tanks are always good, regardless of what their BR is, it, and it is on a tank-by-tank -tank basis. Like, the BA-11, I love but it's not very good. But if we look at the Matilda, Matilda's got a ton of armor. Doesn't have the best gun, but it's pretty good because it's got a ton of armor. Or, let's see... Da, 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 da. The... I probably have to go into special offers for this one. This one right here. The Panzer 3M. Very good tank. It's BR2. It's got pretty good armor. It's got a pretty good gun. You really can't go wrong with it. But... The, the point here is that, across the board, there are good vehicles that maintain their value at all of the BRs. It's just on a vehicle-by-vehicle -vehicle basis. Some are bad, some are good, but when they are good, they keep their value. And what do I mean by that? I think the value of a premium squad is tied not to what they give you instantly, in that instantly you get premium bonuses... You get, like, the research, and you get a cool-looking squad, usually, and you get a different weapon. Like, all, all of that is nice, right? But the thing is, most of the premium squads are not one-to-one -one equivalent with their tech tree counterparts, right? So, because of that, eventually you're going to outpace them, and if you're going to buy a premium squad, I think ideally you want it to be something that, even once you've played the whole game, you'll still look at them and think, gee, these guys are fun, I want to play them. So, if you take something like the Mosin M44L squad, they are a rifleman squad. There are nine guys in there, there are no specialists. They have very, very limited value. When you start the game and you're playing BR1 or 2, and you have a single rifleman squad, they feel like they have some value. And then you unlock, let's say, a radio squad, or an engineer squad, and then you realize that they have no value. And the reason is, they have no specialists. So because of that, you can do the same thing that they do with a standard rifleman team, and you can do it better. And in this specific case, the M44 Carbine is basically the same gun. But this isn't just them. Like, for example, Germany has the Garat 03. I think it's a really cool gun. I kind of want it just for the gun, but the thing is, I know if I get them, I won't play them a whole lot. Because 
I can just run a nine-man rifleman team with FG-42s, ZH-29s, or give Air 43s and have a very similar experience, and I can give them engineers and radio operators, maybe an assaulter. They just don't hold value. So, moving up from riflemen, there's snipers, and there's assaulters, and there's engineers. Well, actually, there's snipers and there's engineers. Let's go there first. Assaulters are in their own tier. So, the problem with engineers... Is this, this is not... Okay, I know Japan has one. Japan is the type co-rifleman squad. Alright. They're engineers. You get access to them right off the bat. They're going to be able to build everything, which is really nice for a new player. They can build all of the things. But, they're a four-man engineer squad. Realistically, once you get past having two engineers in a squad, it doesn't really matter. And on top of that, it's only a four-man squad. If you get the Type 1 SMG squad, you're going to get an engineer in here that can build all of the things. Because premium engineers can do that. You've got one. You don't really need to, but having two is nice because you build faster, and you can order them to build stuff, and you can walk off and do your fighting. But, compared to a Tech Tree Engineer Squad, Normal Engineer Squad has up to six soldiers in it. It can also take specialists. Having specialists makes it a better squad. These guys basically have no value because of that. They just have cool guns. And, mind you, they are really cool guns. The Type Co. rifle is awesome. It's a BR-3 Japanese rifle that's domestically produced that looks different than, say, an M1 Grand, and it has a 10-round magazine. It's an awesome gun. I would use the crap out of it if I had it for a squad that isn't this squad. Now, snipers kind of fall into the same category, but it has a little bit of a caveat with them. Uh, where were they? I guess we can look at the Russian ones, probably. Yeah, okay. So, the SVT-40 sniper. Now, this is less of a thing with the Russians, because they get these at BR-3. I want to say the German one gets better BRing. Uh, yeah, okay, so... The thing with the German one... This specific squad is unique in that... They have a semi-auto sniper at BR3 for Germany, and there's no other way to get that for Germany. So they do have some value that you can't get in the tech tree. You're also going to get a five-man squad of snipers where everybody has a sniper rifle... But whether or not that has value to you, it really comes down to you. Realistically, a normal sniper tr or tech tree sniper squad is going to get three snipers, but they're also going to get multiple specialists. And having specialists, as we already established, generally makes a squad better. There's an issue with premium squads just across the board in this game. They're very low value. Like, most of them, for what you pay into them, you just don't get anything that's equal to the value of what's in your tech tree. At the same ish range as these, you're going to find a lot of the planes. Most of the premium planes just don't have good loadouts. Like this one, you'd be better off just getting one of the BF 110s in the tech tree because they're going to get bombs or they're going to get rockets. Some of them even have 30 mil cannons on them. And this isn't unique to, to like, this attack plane. If we look at, say, Russia, you can get the Ak-9K. It, it, it's alright. Or if we look at America... I think I'm... I want to say America... Yeah, America only gets the 100-pound bomb. So, again, you're getting a fighter. But the, the thing is, fighters can be good situationally. If the other team isn't spawning planes and not calling in bombers, this plane is useless. 
and it's not doing anything for you to help you research anything. Now, there are planes that are really good, but th this is kind of what I was talking about before, where there's a caveat. The FP-5 is fantastic because it gets a good loadout. The Mosquito is fantastic because it gets a good loadout. The problem is most premium fighters specifically don't get good loadouts and therefore are very low value. Also, regardless of which one you pick down here, there's usually a tech tree plane that does the same thing that they do. Like, if you didn't pick up the Mosquito, well, there's a bow fighter, there's a P-51, and there's an A-20 that all do effectively the same thing, differently, and sometimes better. The FP-5, though, being a BR-3, nothing really does what it does. Um, the P-51 arguably could be better, but this is getting two launches with the h -Vars, so you're getting multi-drops and you're getting the fuel tank, so... It depends. This is like one of those standout planes that has pretty good value, but we're at the tier of premium squads where they're starting to have long-lasting value. It's just everything that we've talked about before now kind of doesn't. So now at this same range of, of premium squads, we have the radio squads and we have the assault squads. Now, the radio squad... They hold value because, number one, four radio operators, and they have an engineer. So you've got a combination of specialists as it stands. I, I mean, ideally, you'd run a normal tech tree radio squad where you can also have a machine gunner, and you can also have, like, an AT soldier, and you get more bang for your buck there. But you've got five radio operators. They all come with their second weapon slot already open. So you can play them up and give them M2 carbines, or you can play them down and take away their carbines and just leave them with their SMLEs. And it gives them a lot of flexibility, and it means that they have staying power. And on top of that, the real value in them is that with four radio operators, you have resistance to attrition. So in a normal radio squad, you have two radio operators. If both of the operators die, you can't call in any more artillery. With these guys, because you have four of them, you can keep taking casualties, which is inevitably going to happen, because the bots get themselves killed all the time. And so, it allows you to continue calling in artillery later on than you might be able to with another radio squad. Now, like I said before, at the same BR, or not the same BR, at the same, like, value tier, you're going to find your assault squads. The reasoning for that is that assault squads just have really good weapons. They're some of the best squads you can pick up early. The problem with them is that their value falls off really, really hard the further you get into the tech tree. Because, say, like, the PPSH-41 Parkerized, they're awesome. They're a ton of fun. I mean, I don't have them, but I've picked up their gun and... Oh, wait a minute. I have the same thing in the tech tree. So here's the thing. You can take a seven-man squad, assault squad, give four of them PPSHs. Depending on the squad, you can actually give a fifth one a PPSH with a medic. And then you can still have, uh, let's say, an engineer and an AT soldier, right? So you have a seven... I think there's seven-man squads. Let me look. I want to make sure I'm not... Yeah, okay. There are seven-man squads. And so... There are various different ways you can outfit them. They give them just as much firepower, if not more. And they get specialists. So... They have a ton of value early. And some of them have kind of cool weapons. But a lot of them don't. Like... These Russian ones. This is basically the same thing as the Model 5, but it's got a bipod instead of a bayonet. And the bayonet probably has more value. Likewise, these guys have PPSH-41s. They're literally PPSH-41s. Looking at uh, Germany, the Suomi is kind of unique in that you can't get anything like the Suomi anymore. But as somebody who had Stalingrad access, 
I have captured PPSHs that do the same thing. So, again, I think premium assault squads lose their value pretty quickly because you unlock things in the tech tree that do what they do better. Now, we're getting into the top level. At the top level, you have, as I mentioned earlier, your tanks, you have your machine gun squads, and you have your half-tracks. We're going to start with the half-tracks. So the reason why the half-track has so much value is because it is the perfect premium squad if you remove them from a half-track. Like, if you took the half-track away, it is exactly the layout that any other premium squad should have with specialists. Okay? What do I mean by that? Let's look at the one that I have right here. Alright. You can have up to two assaulters, up to two machine gunners, an AT soldier, a driver, and a radio operator. Okay? If they didn't have the half-track, and they didn't get an engineer for that, I would be pissed. But they have a half-track, so they don't need an engineer. So what you're getting here is effectively three assaulters, so that's already more than half of an assault squad. You're getting two machine gunners, so now you have just as much firepower, but you have more versatility than a premium assault squad. And, on top of that, you can bring an AT soldier. Now, mind you, these guys are set up for BR2. This would look a lot more formidable if they were set up for BR3, 4, or 5. But, the point is, you cover all of the bases here. You have a spawn point, you have an emplaced machine gun, you have an AT weapon, you have machine gun soldiers that offer you more firepower over range, and you have dedicated assault troops. This is by far the best premium squad layout they have ever come out with. And you can even choose to flex in a radio operator if you'd rather have a radio operator than one of these alternatives. And admittedly, a BR-2, it probably is more worthwhile to run the radio operator than the AT soldier for Germany. Now, they also get their half-track on top of that. On top of being this whole squad that has multiple soldier types, they also can drive their mobile spawn point around, park it anywhere on the map, and have all of their teammates come running out of it. And the, and the thing is, instead of spending time sitting somewhere building a spawn point that's going to sit there and beep and let everybody know where it is, you can stash this thing in, in a garage, in a shed, behind a building. You can leave it parked on the side of the street and make it look like battlefield debris. It doesn't beep. You spend just as much time driving to the front as you do running somewhere and building a spawn beacon. Like, this is the pinnacle of, of what a normal premium squad probably should look like. And, and the thing is, if you look at their tech tree counterpart, their tech tree counterpart, the way that I have it set up at least, is effectively three assault troops, two riflemen, and an AT soldier. So they don't even have as much going for them as the premium squad does. Although that being said, I almost always will run these guys. I think they, they are also an awesome squad. But that's to say that whether you're playing at BR2, BR5, it doesn't matter. Half-tracks have so much value. They're awesome squads. Moving on from there, let's look at the MG42 early. Now, this isn't unique to this squad. There are other squads that are like this. But, they are a five-man squad. They all get light machine guns. If we look at Germany, belt-fed DP, five-man squad, they all have machine guns. Um, I don't think I can pull them up here, and I don't want to go digging for them, but I've got a Lewis gun squad. It's a five-man squad, they all have light machine guns. Fedorov squad, five-man squad, all light machine guns. There's nowhere else in the game, there's literally no other way in the entire game 
to get a five-man squad where every single guy in the squad has a light machine gun. Because of that, they are not power creepable. Having having five machine guns gives you so much value for holding a position. You can push into an objective, hunker down, and between you and your AI, you can mow down everybody trying to get in there. Now imagine if you have time to prepare a position and defend it. Some of them, but not all of them, get two engineers as well. So, sure, you're giving up an AT soldier, which isn't ideal. It would be great if they could get an AT soldier. But, you're getting five light machine guns, sometimes you're getting two engineers, sometimes you're only getting one, they can build heavy machine guns. They're just, they're unpower creepable, because you cannot bring that kind of firepower in a normal light machine gun squad. It's not like a normal assault squad, where you can bring five guys with, with submachine guns, and then on top of that have an engineer and an AT soldier. Finally, let's look at paratroopers. Now, paratroopers have probably the most value of anybody in the game, bar none. And the reason for that is within 20 seconds they can show up on any area in the map, anywhere inbounds on the map, and they get a box that lets them pull out basically whatever they want. So they're not just, like, they look like an assault squad. They look like a six-man assault squad. You land, and now they're a three-man machine gun squad plus three assaulters. Or you land, and they're three AT soldiers plus three assaulters. Or you land, and you become a full-fledged mortar team plus assaulters. Or you land, and you become a full-fledged sniper team plus a radio operator plus assaulters. Which is to say, they have more flexibility, and they have more power, and they have more versatility than any other premium squad in the game, bar no one, not even vehicles. So if you're going to pick up any premium squad, always look at the paratroopers first. On top of that, if you're playing Russia, the Russian paratroopers can change their primary weapon so you can play them at any BR. So they have unparalleled versatility. The only other things that are that versatile are the half-tracks, where you can also swap all of their weapons and play them at any BR in the game. BR1 doesn't count because it match makes with BR2. Now, let's close things out with vehicles. I, I kind of went over them before, but they're also in this category where they have tons of staying value. It's just, unlike the half-tracks, and unlike the paratroopers, their value is dependent on, number one, their BR, and number two, whether they're good. And you could flip those around. You could argue whether they're good, and then what their BR is. The SU-100 is fantastic. I probably should pick it up next time it goes on sale. I've been kind of sleeping on it. But... Depending on the tank, it can be very, very good, because a lot of the time they're equal to their tech tree counterpart. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of ways they can make them less valuable other than just making a bad vehicle. So, yeah, like for example, the BM-824, it's really unique, it's kind of cool, but it's not very good. But... Like, by comparison, the SU-100 can pretty much punch through anything you put in front of it. It's kind of unique in that there's nothing with a 100 mil gun in the Russian tech tree. And the thing is, it's not like you're getting half a tank crew. You're getting a full tank crew. Like, there, there's nothing for them to take away from a tank crew. So, they always hold value. The only other thing that there really is for you to spend gold on are appearances, and I think spending gold on appearances is a scam. Number one, the whole appearance system needs to be reworked, which we're not going to get into in this video, just know the appearance system is really, really bad, and it needs a full rework. But number two, 
you're not paying 60 gold and getting this hat for everybody in the squad. You're not paying 60 gold and getting this squad or this hat for everybody in the army. You're paying 60 gold and you're getting one hat that you can put on one soldier. Yeah. So that's just for the hat. Let's say you oh by the way 240 for the shirt. 60 for the pants, 60 for the gloves. Oh, and if you want to change the head, that's another 60. So, what does that round us out to? 480 gold. That's for one soldier. There's seven guys in this squad. You could probably buy this premium squad of medics for as much as you're going to spend outfitting a whole squad. It's probably, it probably isn't the same, to be honest. The, the premium squad's probably a little bit more, but I'm not doing the math, and that, that's, a, that's a lot. Actually, the premium squad's probably less, now that I think about it. But a anyway, the point is, there is no value in buying cosmetics for your soldiers. Like, get the appearance tokens, use the appearance tokens. The only other thing is if you look at uh, normal weapons. No, I guess you can't do it anymore. I'm pretty sure you used to be able to buy them for gold. I think because they added the silver thing and they took that away. So yeah, that is your premium buying guide. The TLDR, if you want to go over it real quick, premium account number one, battle pass number two, squad slots number three, Premium squads, situational, and they have their own tier list, but they have less value. And then everything else that you can spend uh, gold on, whether it's silver or progressing your events, all lower value. And actually, one other thing. I can't really show you because I have a ton of uh, XP saved up. Um, maybe for Japan. Okay, yeah, Japan. You can spend gold to progress through the tech tree. Don't do that. I mean, you can do it. It's just... You're not going to get that much value out of doing it. If if you're going to spend... What was that? Like, 1,200 gold... To jump through a squad here? Then just buy a premium squad. Like, if you've gotten to the point where you want to spend gold to progress through the tech tree, I think you would be better off just buying a premium squad that you actually enjoy. So, let me know down below, do you agree with my order of value? Do you think that there are things that are more valuable that I undervalue? I'm sure that people are going to disagree with me with my value system for premium squads, but, I, I mean, it, it's my idea. Obviously, I don't disagree with myself. <laughs> so, as per usual, get out there, kick ass, take names, and win your games.